September. Everybody's excited, start of the season, lovely grass pitches, but we want to keep on top on them. Just keep them cut, let the grass grow out to about three inches in height, keep the cutting going throughout the month of September, and after games and training, chain arrow or put the quadra play on the pitch to stand the grass back up. We're now into October, getting well into the autumn. Keep the grass cutting going, but remember to let it grow out to about three inches. Still lots of grass. We can use the quad replay and the chain arrow to keep the patterns going. And towards the end of the month, the field would really appreciate an autumn and winter feed, high in potash. That's what we need at this time of the year. November. We're now getting into the wet winter months of the year. Final cut this month, leave the grass at three inches long, put your cutters away, go and get them serviced. Chain arrow and quad replay to get your patterns on the pitch. And at this month, start the aeration program in earnest. Perhaps use the multi-tine three times this month to really open up the surface so that the winter rain passes through and we're playing rugby in nice dry conditions. Into December, we're now getting into the worst months of the year. Could be either very, very wet or very, very cold. One of the tips for this month is to have some sand on site because you're liable to be playing in wet conditions and if an area gets rutted and a bit waterlogged, put some sand in and brush it into the holes. Aerate it with a hand fork if you have to. Just get some holes into your pitch if it's too wet to get machinery on. If we have a frosty spell and the pitch is a little rutted, Use the quadra play with its light roller to level the pitches so that we can carry on playing, even in the worst of weathers. January, very often the worst month of the year. This month, if at all possible, weather conditions allowing, get onto a verti drainer and pump some holes into that surface, open it up and decrease the compaction. Not a lot more can be done in this month. Perhaps hand fork the linesman's runs, hand fork anywhere that they've had a bad scrum or the malls have made a mess. Have that sand on site to fill the holes in and generally try and keep off it unless the weather conditions allow. Golden rule of groundsmanship, only go on if you're gonna do good. Don't go on if you're gonna cause more damage. February, one of the most exciting months of the year for me personally. The Six Nations kicks off. Great tournament, everybody connected with rugby is really excited as the nations start this year's battle. At club level, the pitches are just starting to come out of the winter. Remember to keep chain arrowing if at all possible, but only go on pitches where the conditions allow you to. Try and get an aeration done if you didn't get it done last month. The little multi tiner if we can get it on, would be fantastic. But if we didn't verti drain last month, get the verti drain on this month and just open up the, the ground and decrease the compaction. March, we're now coming out of the winter into the spring and hopefully the green shoots of recovery are there. Get the mowers out, keep the grasses in nice trim. We don't want them looking scruffy and long we want to be playing on nice pitches. Perhaps air rate again, perhaps keep the chain arrow going if the weather conditions allow. And if at all possible, as soon as the temperatures start to rise, apply a spring and summer fertilizer. Something to just bring us out the spring into the summer that much quicker and to strengthen the grass and to give us a stronger plant on which to play. April. This is the month where we do it all. Start to plan early April, our remedial works. Start to lower the cut of the grass so that we ended up about 40 millimeters ready to sow our brand new grass seed into. Sort out where we're gonna buy the sand from, the fertilizer from, the seed from, and get a contractor lined up. Find out the final fixture date and start the very next day. We need the maximum time to get the grass growing, ready for the next season coming up. We don't have too long. End of April, start of May, soon as that last fixture's been played, this is our time. 
spread your sand I would recommend between 30 and 60 tons of sand on every pitch that you've got spread the sand evenly all over the pitch if you have any little low spots or any really bad spots give them a bit of extra sand the sand is of vital importance to really rejuvenate the ground the next job is aeration I'd use as big a spiker as I could get hold of a verti drain the soil reliever pump as many holes in into the surface as you can then chain arrow or brush that sand into them holes using either a multi seeder or a disc seeder get your seed into the soil we need it about 10 to 12 millimeters deep once you've gone that brush the sand over the seed chain arrow the sand if needs be get it nice and level but get the seed in contact with the soil that is of most important and then apply a good spring and summer fertilizer I would say use something like an 8128 that will give the grass plant every nutrient it's going to need as it starts to establish ready for next season don't scrimp don't save money seed and feed are of vital importance for next year's play May and June once the seed starts to grow keep your eye on it and when it gets to about 50 millimeters high two inches start to clip it cut it in different directions to tiller the grass grass has this magical way of spreading and what we want is a good sward of grass to play on keep it cut but keep everybody off it if we've got irrigation use irrigation when we need to but keep the grass growing and keep the players off of it July cut in two directions now start to put your pattern in ready for the season the grass should be growing really well now but it could do with a boost so we give it a spring and summer feed something of about 1244 just to give it a high nitrogen to bring on the color and to give us a much a much denser sward of grass to play on August everybody's favorite month pre-season friendlies getting back onto our brand new pitch this is the month that we mark it out nice bright white straight lines don't weed kill your lines in use the proper paint to leave a, a, a really good mark on which to play keep the cutting going just start to let the cut go out towards the 75 mil three inches this is the month we start to play so we start to protect the pitch one job we must do is check all goal posts make sure that the goal posts have not been damaged nobody's damaged them during the season no kids have been swinging on them it's important our game is daft enough and really really tough enough without a goal post falling on somebody so that's of vital importance mowing irrigation if we need to pre-season friendlies but goal post safety take pride in the pitches at your club Stand at the clubhouse and see how good the patterns on your pitch is. Make sure that you stripe it up and paint your white lines as straight as possible. Everyone who comes into the ground will see what you see, so try and look at it with a newcomer's eye. The main point is to look after your pitches properly. The biggest and most important job is to aerate your pitches as often as you can. If you don't have a spiker already, work with your club committee to secure some funding to purchase one. Try and build up a relationship with an RFU pitch improvement partnership or a private contractor that is able to provide an aeration solution such as a saw relieving at a competitive price. Visit the RFU website to find out more details on specific machinery that I recommended and how you can work with the RFU to secure a discounted rate direct from the manufacturer.